So if you find that you're gaining weight, even though you like eat healthy or healthy-ish, you live a mostly healthy lifestyle, but you're still gaining weight, this video is for you. Good morning from New York City. So after I filmed my PCOS video, so many of you guys said do a part two, do a part three. So welcome to part two. This video, we're gonna talk all about the workouts that I do for PCOS, as well as some other habits that have been really helpful. I successfully snuck out before my daughter or husband woke up. One of the first symptoms I had with PCOS was weight gain and then irregular periods. And I'm somebody that I eat healthy and I live an active lifestyle, so this just didn't make sense. And once I got diagnosed with PCOS, when I did my own research of how can I heal my body in a holistic way, working out is one of the number one things to help with PCOS, specifically weightlifting and having more muscle on your body. sitting on a bench today is leg day I love a day nobody is in the gym so I'm just gonna warm up my legs a little if I had resistance bands here I would kind of do like a crab walk with them but I don't so funny enough I've been finding all of my workouts besides asking Jared some moves in between um, I've been finding almost all my workouts on Pinterest I was just doing Pilates and walks as my workout, but this year something I'm doing differently for PCOS is lifting weights. So the formula that's the best for my body and losing fat and gaining muscle is Pilates one day a week and weightlifting three days a week. And I break it into different body parts. So you guys saw I did biceps, today I'm doing legs, and the next day I'm doing shoulders. And something that's really important to know is I'm working out on non-consecutive days. So Monday could be Pilates and Wednesday could be legs and Friday can be shoulders. Having more muscle on your body not only looks good, so obviously there's the look aspect of it that I like, but also it helps you burn more fat throughout the day when you're in resting mode. Alright, you guys are balancing on my suitcase right now. You got to see some of my workouts minus Pilates. I'll be doing Pilates once we get back to Florida, but for here, uh, I was just doing my weightlifting. So when I go back to Florida, I'll be doing Pilates one day a week and then weightlifting the rest of the week. I am upping my workout schedule to four days a week, but I just want to put this out there. I've been doing three days a week consistently since January, and I think that that's important to mention because a lot of times people hear a new workout routine and they get like so excited and they're like, I got this and then they can't stick with it. And last year I did a lot of like two days a week, sometimes one day a week. So then this year saying as a goal, okay, I want to up it up to three and now I'm at four. And I think that that is important to do it in baby steps. So as we talked about in my last video, I have insulin resistance PCOS. So basically if you have this as well, which I heard is the most popular kind of PCOS. PCOS is a hormone imbalance. When our insulin rises, our blood sugar spikes, and then that's when we have a lot of PCOS symptoms like weight gain in the midsection, crazy sugar cravings, feel lethargic throughout the day and fatigue. And that's why it's really important to manage your PCOS symptoms because later on in life, it could lead to other things. I was reading like diabetes and different things like that. So it's really important to heal your PCOS. And I'm gonna give you some more tips that I didn't get to like fully talk about in my last video. So I talked about a little, but this video is gonna break down like the three things that I focus on weekly with PCOS. And it has helped me lose fat. It's it's gonna help me keep fat off in general. Helps a lot with managing the sugar cravings and just feeling really good. So if you find that you're gaining weight, even though you like eat healthy or healthy-ish, you live a mostly healthy lifestyle, but you're still gaining weight, this video is for you. So whether you know you have PCOS insulin resistance or you think you have suspicion you have it, then I highly recommend watching the rest of the video and hearing all my tips. The three things we're focusing on in this video is coffee, weightlifting, and protein. So let's get into it. Let's start with coffee. 
So I am a coffee lover, as you guys know. I was somebody, for the most part, I'd have morning coffee, and then by 3 p.m., especially when I became a mom, by 3 p.m., it would just be my moment. Like, I'd be so excited for a nice hot cup of coffee or an iced coffee. I love going out to get coffee. Like, I love all the things. I love everything about coffee. And you have to do trial and error to see what your body can handle because there is so much out there in the PCOS world that says you can't ever have coffee, and then some that says you can have a little bit. So you definitely want to like trial and error with your own body. So for me, what I can handle is a morning cup of coffee and that's pretty much it. I can't have an afternoon coffee. It's not even in my realm. And the reason being and why it can affect people with PCOS is because coffee raises our cortisol, which is our stress hormone. People with PCOS, already have an issue with their stress hormones. So much can put stress on your body when you have PCOS from not getting good sleep to high intensity workout classes. And then when our cortisol rises, so does insulin and blood sugar and yeah, recipe for disaster. A lot of people with PCOS struggle with and coffee can make matters worse. So what I do is I just have coffee in the morning and I don't have afternoon coffee anymore. Now, if you're watching this and you're like, but Sam, I'm a mom, or maybe you're a busy person, or maybe you just like that comforting feeling of coffee in the afternoon, and you're like, what can I have instead? One recommendation would be matcha, and I like to call it my matcha moment, but if that's not your jam, because you're like, it just doesn't remind me of coffee, I have something else for you guys. So what I will do is, like I said, I have my coffee in the morning, and then in the afternoon when I want that like, comforting feeling of coffee but i don't want to get shaky and i don't want all that caffeine i will have peak's new product which is nandaka this is actually the first coffee alternative that's created for women and i'm going to share all the different things it does but first i just want to show you that it's a lot like their matcha and then it comes in the satchels it's cacao so i think the cacao gives you more of that coffee taste or even just like the look then matcha like I understand why some people don't go for matcha right away when they're trying to give up coffee and then they end up just going right back to coffee this I think you guys will really enjoy and it's like coffee where you can either have it iced or hot so it actually says right here it's adaptogenic coffee alternative and it tastes like cacao and then it has like after notes of cherry so the cacao in the nandaka activates your metabolism so it can help combat bloat and curb sugar cravings which is really amazing for pcos because people with pcos rave sugar it's slow release caffeine it provides sustained energy no jitters no crash and then the functional mushrooms support clear radiant skin and regulate pms and mood and it just tastes like a delicious coffee craft and something you can do if you're like me and the whole reason you like an afternoon coffee is because you want something sweet like maybe you have a favorite creamer you can switch to nandaka and then you can still use your favorite coffee creamer and just add that i've made it that way too but i think my favorite way is with honey because it already does have like a sweeter aftertaste it's delicious it's comforting and it's going to give you sustained energy. For a limited time, Peak is going to give my subscribers 15% off the starter kit, which will have the electric hand stirrer that I used to make this and the glass beaker, as well as the Nandaka and a free throat propolis spray. So click my link in my description bar. You don't need a code or anything. The link will auto apply the discount. So I will leave all of that down below. Okay, next let's talk about weightlifting and why I created a late weightlifting schedule and i want to make a home gym when we go back home jared's been saying we need a home gym for a long time he's been weightlifting literally since he was like 14 and he's always told me the importance of having muscle on your body and i guess i just never wanted to listen i think also too there's so many outdated beliefs that when women lift weights they're gonna get really bulky yeah that's like in the past why i would just lift weights once in a while. Fast forward to now, I can't even see myself not lifting weights when I've seen what it has, has done to my body. Basically, if you look at what is the best way to heal your PCOS symptoms, the first thing that pops up is diet and lifestyle changes that you can make at home. So obviously reducing the sugar, which we're gonna talk about, and then it talks about working out. So if you dive even deeper and say, okay, well, what kind of workouts are the best for PCOS? It's actually weightlifting. So more slow paced workouts and resistance workouts. So that is going to be the best for PCOS. Something I keep repeating to myself is the more lean muscle you have on your body, 
the more your body will just naturally burn fat when you're in resting mode. So my body right now, just filming this video, can burn fat the more lean muscle I have. That is really important for PCOS because people with PCOS store more fat. So how can we burn more fat? We have to build lean muscle. I mentioned a doctor in my last PCOS video, but this was something she brought up and it just kind of stuck with me. Natalie Crawford, I originally found her on TikTok, and, but she has a podcast too. And she was talking about how lifestyle changes can make a huge difference for people with PCOS. She was talking about working out in one, in one of her podcasts and you need, to, you need to be working out three to four days a week to really make a difference for your PCOS. I was just thinking back to myself of like how last year, why I think the symptoms were getting so much worse for me is I would work out one day a week and then skip a week and then work out two days a week and then skip a week and then one day a week and the pattern would repeat. And what you have to remind yourself is if you're going the holistic route, you're going to have to keep up with it. You're going to have to keep doing the things. Like we have to think of working out as our medicine, sort of say, with PCOS is that, at least that's how I think of it, is like, okay, for this to work, I have to work at it. I have to do it. Last but not least, let's talk about protein. In order to gain lean muscle, not only do we have to work the muscles, but then we have to eat an adequate amount of protein. And what I found is that protein and fats keep me full longer. Now knowing that I have PCOS, it really does explain the sugar cravings that I would have and how like uncontrollable they were, but adding in more protein, being very intentional about it, like, okay, have I gotten in enough protein today? For me, especially animal protein, this is like the one thing that I'll disagree on with a lot of information out there on PCOS is that they always say like, have as much vegetarian protein as possible and leafy greens and vegetables and all of that. And that's where I'll disagree in that I do think that you should have vegetables, fruit, all of those things. But I think animal protein has been the best for me. Obviously use your body as trial and error and see what's best for you. But when I was vegan and vegetarian, my period was super irregular and my whole gut was messed up from being vegan and vegetarian. It just didn't work for me. That's not to say that it won't work for you or that it isn't working for you, but just for me personally. And I think that it was just an overload of vegetables in that it was hurting my gut. Like too much raw vegetables can actually be really harsh on your gut. I also think that when it comes to protein sources like tofu, for example, high in soy, and soy can raise your estrogen, which when you have PCOS, you already have have high estrogen. Now, obviously tofu is not the only protein so source for vegan and vegetarian, but I'm just saying like a lot of products, like for example, when I would make vegetarian chili, it would already have tofu in it, in the like Annie's mix thing. So just be careful with that if you are vegan and vegetarian, just be careful with like soy products and stuff. For me, eating meat has been so helpful with losing weight because after I work out, I have a protein shake and then for lunch I'll have a chicken salad for dinner I'll have steak so make sure you're having enough protein especially if you start weightlifting and then the other thing I want to talk about is just like sugar in the same category of food I am taking Ovisitol it's a supplement that I mentioned in my last video so definitely check out my other video it's myonisitol which is a supplement that can help your insulin resistance PCOS but it's not magic okay so you don't want to wake up have a sugary Starbucks drink and then have a big pasta salad for lunch a sugary dinner with a sugary dessert and then say why is this stuff not working you want to really remove as much sugar and simple carbs from your diet so that's not to say to go keto I literally had steak and potatoes last night what I'm saying is simple carb like pizza pasta you want to remove some of those things that we don't consider sugars. We think of sugars like cookies and cake and candy, but you wanna remove simple sugars from your diet as much as possible. For me, I like to always leave a little room for honey. I like honey in my non-daca. I like honey sometimes in a protein shake or over a yogurt bowl. I like to leave my sugar for that and less for pizza or something like that. Weightlifting is going to help us build lean muscle, but our diet is what's going to help us lose fat. and really staying on it and I know that it can be hard when you're craving so much sweets when you have PCOS but when you do some of the other things I mentioned like try the Nandaka in the afternoon and taking out your coffee try having a steak at dinner something like very filling meat teas like there's different ways you can curb your sweet tooth cravings going on a walk after 
eating dinner has been really helpful. I have dogs, so I'm literally always going on walks, so that's been really helpful. Uh, but just remembering that weightlifting and taking supplements isn't going to be the end all be all magic. It's not like, okay, once I lift weights, I can go have my pumpkin spice latte, or once I take this supplement, I can have a frappuccino. It's like, no, you also, it always comes back down to diet, right? Like, damn it, why does it always do that? So I've mentioned this before. It's not that I never have cheats. It's not that I never have pizza or cookies. It's just that's not an everyday thing for me. I really want to heal my symptoms in a holistic way, which does require a lot of effort. Listen, guys, you stop feeling fatigued when you do this. You stop gaining weight in your midsection. Like, my skin looks vibrant. Like, my hair is vibrant. Like, I feel like once you make the change and realize that it's all these little things that add up, that's when you really feel your best, and that's enough motivator to stay away from the cheat meals. But anyway, I hope this video helped you guys out make sure to check out peak i'll leave a link in my description and yeah i'll see you guys soon bye